President, I thank my friend and colleague and the President Pro Tem at one time of this body, Senator Leahy. Um, Mr. President, I'm here on the floor today to talk about D-Day, to talk about how we need to remember the 75th anniversary tomorrow of a turning point in World War II, June 6th, 1944, the invasion of Normandy. Historian Douglas Brinkley has written that D-Day was both the single most important moment in the 20th century and one of the bloodiest and most tragic, too, in terms of loss of life. On D-Day, our fleet set forth from the rocky shores of Britain to reach the fog-shrouded beaches of Normandy. On board the thousands of ships and planes were our fathers and grandfathers and great-grandfathers, some no older than 18 years old, who would bravely venture ashore in a show of determination and duty. 160,000 soldiers crossed the English Channel that day. On their backs were rucksacks, some weighing over 80 pounds, but really on their backs was the fate of our allies in Europe, and really the fate of the free world. Were our men to fail that day, Europe might well have fallen to Hitler once and for all. And many of our best and brightest young Americans did fall. We lost more than 10,000 men that day. The Nazis had spent two years fortifying the coast to prepare for this moment. It was Hitler's so-called Atlantic Wall. The beautiful coastline of northern France was covered in barbed wire, landmines, and bunkers. Hell had come to earth to greet our men as they landed, and still they fought on gallantly. At the end of the largest amphibious invasion in history, we stood victorious, battered but unbroken. On we marched through France, through Belgium, and finally into Germany. The world would never be the same. Even today, among the beautiful flowers and fields in Normandy, you can feel the lingering presence of those who died that day in service of liberating Europe. And you can see it, as I have, at the stark, orderly US military cemeteries, where row after row of white crosses and stars of David stand defiant, representing lives lost in a noble cause. And though much has happened in the following 75 years, we can never lose sight of the valor and sacrifice displayed by our armed forces on that day. On Memorial Day, I spoke at the National Veterans Memorial and Museum in Columbus, Ohio, and also at a cemetery in Grove City, Ohio. In both ceremonies, there were World War II veterans present and up front. To see the generations of veterans and family members there to honor the fallen was to see a living embodiment of the stories we ought to remember from a war that recedes further into the past with each passing year. Stories of valor like that displayed by Jim Pee Wee Martin from Dayton, Ohio. On that day, he and the rest of the 106th, the 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment parachuted through German lines into the dark of pre-dawn. Jim was wounded, but fought bravely, earning both the Purple Heart and the Bronze Star for his D-Day efforts. Stories of sacrifice like that of the Nap Napier brothers of Warren County in southwest Ohio. All five served in the war. Two of the brothers of the five landed at D-Day. One died there on the beaches, never to come home to Ohio. These are stories to be preserved for the generations to come. The memory of D-Day, indeed all of World War II, must never be lost. That's why I was proud to join my colleagues on both sides of the aisle earlier today to show the gratitude and appreciation of the United States Senate for the courage shown by our troops who participated in the Normandy landings that day through our resolution. Since I've been a member of the United States Senate, I've come to this floor often on D-Day to recite a very special prayer given by President Roosevelt on that fateful day. It was expected that Franklin Delano Roosevelt would give a speech when the invasion took place, as he did many times before, called the Fireside Chats from the White House. But on the morning of D-Day, FDR was moved to prayer instead. That famous prayer has become known as the D-Day Prayer. It is my understanding that President Trump actually recited this prayer yet just yesterday in the United Kingdom at an event that preceded the official ceremonies tomorrow commemorating the 75th anniversary of D-Day. The words are powerful and deserve to be remembered for generations to come. In 2013, I introduced legislation, the World War II Memorial Act, which directs the Secretary of the Interior to install a plaque 
to be placed on or near the World War II Memorial on the National Mall in Washington, D.C., with the words of the D-Day prayer. I like that because it adds more context and more interpretation to that beautiful World War II Memorial. It was Ohio Christian Alliance President Chris Long who first came to me with this good idea of placing this plaque on or near the memorial, given its history and importance. Since that legislation was signed into law in 2014, we have worked hard with the National Park Service, the Friends of the National World War II Memorial, and the two federal commissions that are required to approve any permanent structure on the National Mall. It's been five years now, actually longer than America's involvement in World War II, and although we do not yet have this plaque placed, we have made progress. The commissions have approved the location of the plaque to be just north of the World War II Memorial at the Circle of Remembrance. If you've been to the memorial, you come from the Washington Monument, you'll see the Circle of Remembrance on the right. The commissions have also approved initial design concepts for the plaque, which must comply with the Commemorative Works Act. And we're moving forward with this project, by the way, without any federal funding. That was our concept. Rather, we're relying on private fundraising, not taxpayer dollars. We'd hope to have the final plaque in place, of course, for the 75th anniversary tomorrow. I'm disappointed we don't, but instead, we will pre pre preview tomorrow the placement of a temporary plaque with the words of the prayer at the chosen location, the Circle of Remembrance, next to the World War II Memorial. At our event tomorrow, which will include the chairman of the Friends of the National World War II Memorial, official from the National Park Service, Chris Long, the president of Ohio Christian Alliance, and a number of World War II veterans, we will also lead a reading of the D-Day prayer. I'm looking forward to that tomorrow. The temporary plaque, by the way, was generously donated to the Friends of the National World War II Memorial by Mr. John Now, a member of the National Parks Foundation Board who felt strongly about at least having a temporary plaque in place. We are hopeful that the permanent plaque will be placed at the circle very soon. The fact that a prayer was offered that day on D-Day by the Commander-in-Chief is historic in and of itself. But it's the content of the prayer, I think, that makes it so worthy of remembrance. I would now like to read the D-Day prayer, if I may. My fellow Americans, FDR began, last night when I spoke with you about the fall of Rome, I knew at that moment that troops of the United States and our allies were crossing the channel in another and greater operation. It has come to pass with this success thus far. And so, at this poignant hour, I ask you to join with me in prayer. Almighty God, our sons, pride of our nation, this day have set upon a mighty endeavor, a struggle to preserve the republic, our religion, and our civilization, and to set free a suffering humanity. Lead them straight and true. Give strength to their arms stoutness to their hearts, steadfastness in their faith. They will need thy blessings. Their road will be long and hard, for the enemy is strong. He may hurl back our forces. Success may not come with rushing speed, but we shall return again and again. And we know that by thy grace and by the righteousness of our cause, our sons will triumph. They will be sore tried by night and by day, without rest until victory is won. The darkness will be rent by noise and flame. Men's souls will be shaken with the violences of war. For these men are lately drawn from the ways of peace. They fight not for the lust of conquest. They fight to end conquest. They fight to liberate. They fight to let justice arise and tolerance and goodwill among all thy people. They yearn but for the end of battle for their return to the haven of home. Some will never return. Embrace these, Father, and receive them, thy heroic servants, into thy kingdom. And for those of us at home, fathers, mothers, children, wives, brothers, sisters of brave men overseas, whose thoughts and prayers are ever with them, help us, almighty God, to rededicate ourselves in renewed faith in thee in this hour of great sacrifice. Many people have urged that I call the nation into a single day of special prayer, but the road is long and the desire is great, and I ask that our people devote themselves in a continuance of prayer 
As we rise each new day and again when each day is spent, let the words of prayer be on our lips, invoking thy help to our efforts. Give us strength to strengthen our daily tasks to redouble the contributions we make in the physical and material support of our armed forces. And let our hearts, let our hearts be stout to wait out the long travail, to bear sorrows that may come, to impart our courage unto our sons, wheresoever they may be. And, O Lord, give us faith. Give us faith in thee, faith in our sons, faith in each other, faith in our united crusade. Let not the keenness of our spirit ever be dulled. Let not the impacts of temporary events, of temporal matters, of but fleeting moment, let not these deter us in our unconquerable purpose. With thy blessing we shall prevail over the unholy forces of our enemy. Help us to conquer the apostles of greed and racial arrogancies. Help us to the saving of our country and with our sister nations into a world unity that will spell a sure peace, a peace invulnerable to the schemings of unworthy men, and a peace that will let all men live in freedom, reaping the just rewards of their honest toil. Thy will be done, almighty God. Amen. I think you agree with me that these profound words deserve to be made permanently part of our broader World War II memorial for a noble day that we must never forget. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield back.